Hi everyone, I'm to have some more New Year's Day Blitz, not played for a bit, I'm on the 5 minute auto pairing, it's got 20, 12.89 is white. I think I'll play Verisov to mix it up, not played the Verisov yet on video. It's going to be Karakan now by transposition. Just going to chop, no oh, he hasn't. So I'll play E5, get a space advantage. And now it's some kind of winner where it looks like, but with black can move behind because he hasn't played C, he's played C6 instead of C, C6 instead of C5. So, I'm going to be a move up now. You see, I'm um, tempo up, so I'm going to play Queen G4. Now, and it's just a move up because he hasn't put his Queen on C7, that was 9 E7. And he's played King F8 to defend it. And I will play now F4, supporting E5 point more. So he's attacked my Queen. So, Queen H5, I think. Good active square. Follow up with um, bishop d3. Of that knight f3, bishop d3. So he's chopped, so I chop here. And now, now he's attacking the um, d4 point. So I play knight f3 to defend it. Also preparing knight g5 to take a left 7. Maybe create some dark square weaknesses because black's missing his dark square bishop, which is the main positional disadvantage of the winning weight, even when it's you and move up. And I've now provoked some without even playing knight g5. I shall calmly retreat to h3. And then maybe g4 and queen h6 check would be dangerous. I think I'll play bishop d3 and bishop e3 and maybe get rid of that um, annoying knight and create bishop's opposite claw where black's got his bad bishop left. So that'd be rather nice. Um, but I'm tempted for g4. But is that too many par moves? I just put the bishop here first. Maybe for maybe threatening to take. Or maybe threatening to play g4. Now he's got two pieces on that pawn. Maybe c3 just solidifying or I can take an f5. Um, bishop takes f5 but don't really accomplish that much. I think I'll just play c3 and support it for awaiting and fair actions. But the problem is I've put another pawn on the dark square so I'm making this bishop worse and now he's threatening to take on c3 with check. Typical winner of counterplay. But there is also threats of knight takes d4 potentially. But it's friendly queen takes c3. I think I'm going to sacrifice his pawn. I'm going to castle out of it all. I'll sacrifice c3. Except he's forking rook and bishop. So I've just blundered. So I've got to play bishop takes f5. Well, it's still losing, but I might get some discoveries on his queen or something. But he's just took back and ignored my rook, which is good because it was safe to take. And now bishop d2 kicking that um, queen away. But this is better for black, so I know if I've got an opening which I like a tempo up, I've completely blundered it all away. Such an idiot, me. And now I can't defend the d4 point, so I'm losing another pawn. I think it's time for an all approach. So I'm going to try and play queen f6. Something like queen d8. In fact, I think he's going to have to move his bishop first. Because if he plays knight takes d4, I've got stuff like queen d8. And then, yeah, he's moved his bishop. But he's cat castle. Now I can play maybe queen f6. Play my queen to a very strong advanced square with tempo attacking the rook. And now maybe knight h4 to keep the initiative up. But knight takes g6. But then my bishop hangs. And I can't play bishop b4 because that knight's on it. Like a car bonnet. I think my queen's safe from being trapped. I think I'll play um, rook fc1 and then try and maybe play rook to c6 and bishop b4 could be dangerous. I'll go for that. His knight moving is risky because the bishop b4 check hammering him along that. Oh, she's kebabbing him along that diagonal. Oh, he's done it. He has done it, so I'll check while I get the chance. And if he goes to e8, queen um, e7's mate, so he has to go to g8. But what have I really achieved? I'll take and then king h1. Check. And then try and play um, rook c7. Oh, I've just dropped f4 as well. This isn't ideal whatsoever, two pawns behind. If 
Right, last gas before resigning. Rook C7, Rook on the 7th. But I can't even really follow it up because my back rank's too weak. Now it looks like the queens are coming off with indecisive effect. C1, he'll probably take. And then have I got any compensation? Probably not. But this pawn f6 may cause a few problems, but he's got so many extra pawns. In fact, he's like three pawns up, I think, or one, two, three, four, I think it's three pawns up. My only opposite is uh, bishop's opposite colour. I'd do anything for a draw now, even though he's low rated. If I can take a pawn back now, actually, which is quite nice. But now he's always his kingside, massive kingside pawn majority is being mobilised. But now I can feel me overlooked at seventh. But I have to watch out for back rank cheapos. I think I've got a bit of compensation, but I don't think it's enough. It won't be enough in long play, but this is a uh, blitz. I'm at that bishop she's rock solid and the bishop opposite calls actually costing me because I can never get rid of that bishop. Trying to attack some pawns. That bishop ain't do anything on that diagonal. It's so annoying I can't get rid of that bishop. Just try and create something going. So maybe if FG maybe play bishop takes g5, just to get something going. Anything. Right, so I'm just two pawns down for nothing. You need to create as much trouble as possible. You can always play rook c8 and challenge that rook, which is very annoying. He's played h4. Just nothing that the cast can't break through. It's just absolutely nothing. this pawn. Need to play a lot faster as well. Don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to try and bring a rook to g3 and threaten some cheap pawns. Probably going to regret that. I'm not even threatening him with any discovery, so he's moved his king away anyway. <sighs> Terrible. Rook g, I'm going to try and play rook g7. Need to move faster. Get moving in the pre move flow. Try and create some cheap holes like Rook C8. I think I can take. Can I get away? Yeah, I think I can get away with taking actually, because if he takes a bishop, he gets back rank mated. Yes, a cheap hole at last. But I'm going to lose on time, that's the problem. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, what a swindle, he's been swindled he has with uh, two rooks like the lawnmower checkmate and he has to block with his rook and I'll take him his mate and he's resigned, what a swindle, Let's have a look at this again, so he starts off as a very self and then he transposed into a winner with French but with him losing the move with c5. You see, in this position, Black would usually have either a knight on e7 or a queen on c7, but he hasn't. It's my turn. But I slowly start to mess up. I'm getting a drift in an inferior position, somehow. See, I lose this pawn. Could have took a rook as well, but I'm soon start dropping pawns. Check. That check didn't really do anything. Check. Now with this move, he forces the queens off and me into a lost endgame, where I've got very little compensation, and that bishop, I just can't break past that bishop problem. So I'll try and create a stir bit of trouble and with very little time as well. And then somehow I managed to um, swindle because he blunders. I can, I can actually take the pawn because if he takes my bishop it's mate but he also if he moves his rook it's also mate on h4. So he'd probably have to, um, he's probably in a bit of trouble now actually because I'm, I'm only a pawn behind but I've got rooks right near his king but he can be, this can be defended. Maybe maybe you should just play rook g8. In fact, rook j looks quite strong actually. In fact, rook j rook takes yeah rook j looks like um, giving him winning chances, but 
Your blunders thankfully and then you can get a mate next move. So, what a swindle and please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.